Hi everyone, book review time. I have a tremendous number of books, and today it's going to be Richard Pilbrough's Stage Lighting Design, The Art, The Craft, The Life. I like it so much, I have two copies. Here we go. So Richard Pilbrough, a great guy, terrific designer, and so generous with his time. I have two copies of his book. This one was published in uh, somewhere around 2000, and this one was published in 2008. I had... Uh, pushed him and begged him for to come out with another copy and he did and he actually thanked me which was a lot of fun and one of the things I like about Richard is that he really appreciates the people who put the show together obviously he's devoted it to his uh, friends and, and mentors and, and his wife and daughter uh, but here he's devoted it also to the master electricians that put the show together um, without the master electricians none of our shows are going to work out we're going to start with Chapter one, living light for living people. Um, he really does observe light in nature. We have the properties of light. We've got intensity over here. Obviously, that's going to be important. We go into color. Uh, we've got um, distribution and movement here. Selective visibility. How to do it in introduction. This is a terrific chapter because it tells you uh, the nuts and bolts about how we want to be lighting the actor. We don't want to just be lighting the set. So he also discusses the method. Now the method is the Stanley McCandless method and he debunks it slightly, though it's a good basis to start. And he adds his own method. I like uh, the way that he approaches that. Lighting the acting area, he's got some terrific drawings. Uh, and illustrations throughout the book. Let's see what else I want to show you. It's, um, he talks about the motivated light, but then he also talks about the motivated light. Now here we have a typical box set. Now I have to admit that there are a lot of other books that are going to show you how to draft and lay out drawings, um, and I'm going to be reviewing a few of those too. Um, but here is his rough layout along with a hookup and what the units were for, just to give an idea of how it's laid out. Um, he tells us about the preparation, and the procedures and preparations, and very importantly, the role of the lighting designer. Um, he does cover things like how much you might want to make, but these are from 1995. Now, this is one of my favorite pages. This is a, a script analysis of Showboat. Um, this is uh, like a storyboard layout like they do in film or movies. Um, and if we do it in theater, if we do it to help us understand each scene, we're going to bring a lot more to the table. We're going to be a more valuable team member if we've really analyzed the script to the point where we know the show really well. I like how he talks about the theater and its equipment. And very importantly, he also includes what's called, an, he calls an electrical equipment list, we also call it a shop order. Um, when I'm doing training and when I'm talking to young designers, I stress the point that it's important for the designer, as well as maybe if they have an assistant helping them out, to come up with a full list of gear that they need. Even in a school setting, we want to treat the school setting as if we're professionals in a, in a regional theater or in um, uh, an off-off-Broadway-sized uh, theater or even in a storefront theater. Because it, when you get out into after school time, in the real world is what they call it, uh, you're not going to be able to simply run down to the lighting shop and grab yourself some more gel or uh, another Leco lens. So it's important to have your ducks in a row and figure out all the stuff that you need. So he does show an example of, of his shop order for four baboons adoring the sun and an opera. And he, got, he has a few different things here and here as far as shop orders go. One of my favorite sections of the book is the procedure section, more in getting into the theater. The most expensive time for production is those days where you're not taking in revenue, um, but you're renting the theater. And that's the time when you're loading in the show. So he discusses how to load in a show and the value of focusing. And there's a few drawings in here on how to focus uh, where to stand. These are pretty cool. So, you know, stand here, hit me here. Um, how people are going to be, uh, somebody's on a focus track there. 
you know, somebody's on top of a genie lift and stand here and put your arms out and focus it. So he, t he gives a lot of text in how to do that. And the uh, illustrations are terrific. Another nice illustration. He discusses a little bit about working with an assistant and how to lay out the tech table for your assistant work. Now, this is a terrific area that uh, Richard covers really well, and that's his discussions on color. This is another uh, favorite chapter of mine, and uh, it's, I use it in my How We See Light lecture. Uh, the behavior of light in nature and upon the stage. How do we see light? He discusses it in depth in this chapter. He talks about uh, interior artificial light, moonlight, firelight, candle light, oil lamps, exterior light styles and such. Um, some more examples. Design challenges. Here we have a chapter, musicals, ballet, opera, and lighting and repertoire. For those of you that have dance programs and the dance lighting, he covers that as well. We go into some of the, some of the design challenges as far as open spaces. Uh, he talks about how in the 50s and 60s, uh, people wanted to shun away the proscenium arch, having the two different rooms and having one, you know, the actor's back there and we're out here and it's separate. So he discusses a bunch of stuff about lighting in the round and uh, dealing with that. So those of you that have black box theaters and uh, need to light in the round, you're gonna be, um, be very happy with what's here. Now he talks about tomorrow. Now granted, he talked about this yesterday, so it's been a while, but it still holds up. From his point of view, he's discussing um, how he wrote the book. And he says uh, here that he began the journey in 1970 and he was writing the book on his Macintosh PowerBook Duo and how he returned later, and all the scenery that he'd seen was, uh, was exactly the same, but not so much as far as lighting goes. Later in the chapter, he does get into talking about the advent of very light and these new range of soft edge color dissolving VL5s and ellipsoidal style VL, VL6s are truly revolutionary. So it's really interesting reading this from this side of, that, of those decades. Um, so... Uh, well, it's terrific stuff. Now, this is unique to his book. Some other books tell some stories from the designer's point of views, but he has a whole history section of the history of, of lighting. He talks about, uh, well, here it says oil lamp to laser, and he covers a lot of historical aspects of lighting, and you'll find some of these illustrations on the Internet as far as how uh, lighting happened before there was electric light. So for the history buffs, and for those of you that want your students to have a history of lighting, this is a terrific, um, uh, this book is a terrific choice. Here we have a picture of Edward Cook, who along with his partner Joseph Levy created the Lico. That's where the name comes from. Levy, Cook, L-E, and K-O. Lico. Uh, Richard talks about the history of the of, strand, of century lighting and uh, lighting boards and such, and it's important to know where we came from. Uh, I believe he added uh, more information about this in the later book, but we have a lot of information about the different kinds of control boards that are available or were available at the time. Okay, so here, part three, the life. Um, here is another unique area for Richard's book. And this is having to do with the fact that he interviewed all these people, um, many of whom are still designing uh, today. Uh, as many of you know, I run a workshop called Stage Like and Super Saturday, and Ken Billington has spoken several times. He's been terrific. Um, I met David Hersey when I was studying theater in London. He designed Cats. Uh, that was a show that I saw on Broadway. No matter what your opinion is about Cats, the lighting was uh, spectacular. Uh, whether that word is good or bad in lighting for you, I leave that to you. Uh, but I saw that while I was in college, and I said, I want to meet this guy. And then I met him in London. He was doing Little Shop of Horrors, and he was very helpful uh, to me to meet other people. Uh, and I think that's why I also met Richard Pilbro was through David Hersey. Um, so we have a lot of terrific designers. And the terrific thing about this book 
is that in this book, he goes on to talk to each designer and there's an interview with the designer and they talk a bit about how they got started. They talk a little bit about their approach and that list of designers, we just have them all in here. Um, and they are interspersed between the chapters. Here's uh, chapter 15 is Billington. Um, and he throws in a few stories about uh, his own career. Uh, he founded a company called Theater Projects, which is a theatrical consulting company. They do, they're theater consultants. So it's possible that the theaters that you have been in uh, were designed by his company. In the middle of the book, there's a bunch of pictures, nice big color pictures of various different shows um, and showing pe different people's works, mostly the people that were interviewed in the book. Chris Perry, I met him um, uh, when I was visiting Broadway theaters during my master's years for um, uh, Tommy. So who's Tommy on Broadway? Light and electricity. So he does cover the technology and how things work and uh, how lighting units work and such. He covers a bit of the, about the electrical math that's needed uh, for the designer need to, needing to know. We have a whole section here on color along with some color charts. Um, he talks a bit about color theory and about mixing color and such. Um, there's no LEDs in here. Not an LED to be seen. No LED mixing. Uh, he talks about color media, and I love this. It's a color media t uh, chart, and it's quite handy. And it discusses Lee filters, Lee HD, Cinemoid, which was Strand in Europe. Um, Chris James, I've never seen a Chris James color. Roscoe and Roscoe Lux, Roscoline, Cinegel, Strand, Gam, Geltran. I have a few of these uh, gel books uh, myself. I'm sure some of you are saying, oh, I have those books. So he talks a lot about these colors. And having these as reference comes in handy when you're looking at some of the older textbooks because you, when they're showing the colors that they used, uh, you can look up and see what the colors were that they're talking about. <clears throat> Information about control boards. Okay. Uh, information about lighting units, a lot of different lighting units. Let's get a close-up of this. Okay, what kind of lights? These are strands. So if, you, if you're if you in a theater that has a lot of old gear, uh, this is handy. Not so much the newer stuff. Okay. Uh, projectors, he talks about projections, not video. All right. Some information about symbols and drafting. Um, hand drafting that is you want computer drafting I've got other books tune in soon by the way if you like the video click like and uh, subscribe and click that bell so that you get a notification when I post new videos there'll be more coming okay some information about uh, hand drafting I have some videos on hand drafting some information about lighting software uh, this is uh, written by Eric Cornwell who is um, develops uh, software. He developed LightRight Touch for the iPad. Uh, lighting installation, lighting positions. That is uh, Richard Bilbrow's book. And um, it's, a, it's a terrific read. I use this book when for uh, my Lighting One classes. Um, I recommend it to people who are just getting into lighting because he really does talk about the art of lighting. And he throws in enough technology that you can pull together a show uh, if you're going if you're working in a regional theater off off broadway uh, community theater certainly and uh, certainly in the first years of of uh, study um, you can put together a show um, add to that some other tutorials or books on drafting with a computer and how to use uh, mod current computer boards and you'll be all set but there's a lot of art here um, art, along with some technology, as well as stories from current Broadway designers um, and some designers who are no longer with us. But it's a terrific, um, a terrific book. And if you can get it, go, go for it. It's, a, it's uh, well worth searching it out. Um, the most recent cover looks like this one. 
and the older one looks like this one. The information is really close. You'll be fine with either one. Um, if you want uh, more um, information or you want to tell me what other books you'd like to hear about, please leave that in the comments below. Um, subscribe. Uh, like the video, please. Visit my website. Uh, there'll be more. Check out the description below. Thanks.